There is a story C here, and it finally gives us lore. Lore, 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 lore. Ken Pender shows up. Oh God, no, I'm sorry. Stop. We must not speak of his name. We do not speak of him. I have to say, man, I respect the fuck out of the Sonic the Comic team for this. Yeah, no, this is this is perfect. If you're going to do these like quick rapid fire segments of just like in general segmentizing all these stories. Yeah, creating a segment dedicated to the backstory. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want, especially when the comic hits like 25 issues. There's like something in the back of your mind going, yeah, this comic is going to last a while. Let's flesh some stuff out. At least let's set, we can flesh stuff out and maybe set up for future stuff in the meantime as well. I want to read through this and I want you to think about something in the back of your head. Who did it better? Archie or Fleet Bay? Let's start. A narrator opens on the side of a galaxy. If you travel 117.63222 light years away from Earth, you will find a small galaxy. Except you won't. It's in a parallel universe. Different time zone. Whole other region there. Completely made of dark matter. But if you were able to get there, this is what you'd see. The beautiful, unsplit world of Mobius. That is, of course, until Dr. Robotnik came on the scene but I'm getting ahead of myself. Mobius is made up of several continents. The continents are divided into areas called zones, such as Green Hill Zone. We're focusing on South Island, particularly the Hill Zones. Market Day is in one of the Emerald Hill Zone villagers, and hey, you think it's a little boring, a little dull? Forget it, this is the neighborhood of our own Sonic the Hedgehog. Hidden in one of these zones is his secret base. Where though? As I said, it was a secret. As for, <laughs> as for, and for this guy, he had to get to him sooner or later. Old rotten egg breath himself, Dr. Robotnik. After a few setbacks, Robotnik had set up base in an alternate dimension known as the Special Zone. From here, he rules Mobius and coordinates his operations, sending out badniks into the Starlight Zone. Robotnik has minions running his more important zones, such as the Marxio brothers in charge of Casino Night. Uh, they do take offense to being called minions, but uh, nonetheless. Orbiting Mobius is the Miracle Planet, so to some as the Little Planet. This beautiful place is completely unspoiled and apparently uninhabited. Apparently. Gotta leave room for some surprises. The Miracle Planet appears only once a month and fades away. Where it goes, nobody knows. But what I do know is the six time stones hidden away somewhere on the Miracle Planet with rumors that Robotnik plans to find them. With them, he could control time itself and become unstoppable. But that will never happen. So we hope. So, Robotnik is the ruler of Mobius, the whole planet choking under his evil influence. And while he no longer has the Chaos Emeralds, he still rules the planet. However, Mobians of sound mind know that Sonic is on the good fight and will one day overthrow Robotnik for good. Uh, I'm, uh, believe it. Ah, <laughs> uh, he, he That's a flashbang in my yeah, mind. Yeah, 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 he appears yet again. Anyways, me, you're wondering about your humble narrator? Only I know all there is to know about the world of Mobius because I am Dr. Kintobor, as we see the computer. All right, so while this is not the whole picture, I really have to say it. I adore this. I think this is so perfect for this era of Sonic. It is diverse enough to be its own thing, but it is so in line with the games that it feels like it just fits in. Yeah, you know, especially in this era, we're talking like 1992, 1993 era Sonic. Like this is kind of it. Like I think if Sega wanted to incorporate this as the official canon, I don't think it would be out of place. None whatsoever. And, you know, there's some, some little silly things here and there, don't get me wrong, but, like, I don't know, it feels so much more what you could expect from Sonic at this time. I think it is so picturesque at feeling out what Sonic is without much of an identity in terms of, like, the games. And it's able to perfectly capture that. I can't overstate how impressive that is for this time period. Sonic the comic, man. When it cooks, dude, like you can tell how much they care. Even for something so simple and silly as the blue hedgehog and this and that. No, you could tell they liked this and they were really having fun building out their own like slice of this world. Oh yeah. And I, and I think it's fantastic. I don't know. No notes. No notes. I'm so impressed with this so far. I wanted to save this till the end, but I'm really surprised how hooked I became on Fleetway Sonic, like, right early on. 
you know? I figured that, like, oh, you know, there's going to get some real interesting stuff later on, and I know that's going to come, but, like, I didn't expect for the simple stuff like this to be so attractive to me. I think the big reason that it's attractive, and, you know, look, we're, we're, we're comparing to Archie. Archie has this problem where so much of its early runtime does not incorporate into the rest of the comic. Those first 25 issues, nothing happens. Like, nothing. They're just silly Saturday morning cartoon romps, and that's fine if that's what you want to go for. There's nothing wrong with that. But my personal kind of wider scope theory as far as Fleetway versus Archie is, I think the fact that Archie Sonic started as a spinoff to Sat AM is definitely its biggest detriment. Fleetway Sonic starting to the game's core, yeah, they pull in a little bit of elements and inspiration. Not even elements, inspiration, mostly, from Sad AM. That's that's kind of your best case scenario if that's the, that's the direction you want to take this comic in. I mean, look, and you're like, I, again, we're trying to keep mention of it to like a quote-unquote minimum, but like, I also think the the beauty of it is that when they're creating lore and ideas, they are really trying to make this fit with the world. I think a really big problem that Archie had for a very long time is that its world and lore was being shoehorned into a Sonic comic. Mm -hmm. And it never felt quite right. There were times it did, but a lot of the time, no, not at all. Yeah, could you imagine elements from the games being introduced to the comic only to be, like, effectively it was forced in and had to be worked around. That is a massive problem that early Archie contended with. Meanwhile, Fleetway is seamlessly integrating its own ideas, characters, storylines, and concepts using the games as a base and then going from there and making everything feel part of a wider, more natural whole. We're going to talk about it a little later in this episode, but Tails, Tails gets his own fucking adventures and shit like that. And you want to know why they work? Because they're completely separate from the main story and the main comic. They're different and weird, but they don't feel out of place. 